Okay, so this is a continuation of a previous chapter where we learned how we can create a startup script using this particular meta type metadata key. In this particular chapter, we'll use a gcloud command to do the same as well as another metadata key called startup script URL. So let's start by using the startup script URL. So what you need here is you need a URL along with this particular metadata and that URL has to point to the startup script. So what we will use is a cloud storage bucket and within that cloud storage bucket, we will have our script. So let's create a bucket and within that we will create a startup script. So let's go to a storage bucket first. So let's open our cloud storage. Let's click on browse. And here I've created a bucket called my VLC bucket. And this particular bucket has got a file and this is basically our startup script. So let me show you this particular file. Let me just download this. And it's just the same file that we used in a previous chapter. So what I need to do is I'll just copy this gsutil URL. And all that I need to do is I need to paste it in my instance. So let's go back to our instance again, add a VM instance. And here let's create our instance. So let's make it a E2 micro. And all I need to do is I need to go to my metadata and add an item here. So let me just print the gsutil value first. And the key that I need to use is this particular metadata key. So let's copy this and let's paste it here. So everything is fine. But what I'll do initially is I will make sure that this particular script fails. So how do I make sure that it fails initially? So to do that, what I need to do is I need to go to my scope. So this particular virtual machine is connected to my compute engine default service account. And this compute engine default service account has permissions to access a storage account. So what we'll do is initially we'll deny this particular service account scope to that particular storage. So to do that, let's click on set access for each API. And if you scroll down, if you scroll down here, you can see that for storage, it only has read only scope. So let's deny and let's click on none. And what I'll do is I will save it initially. And when I save it, this particular virtual machine should not be able to create the script because it does not have access to the storage bucket. So let's click on create. And apart from that, let's also give it access to the HTTP firewall. So let's click on allow HTTP traffic. And let's click on create now. So because I have restricted the scope of the service account, it should not be able to create that particular startup script. So let's see if that happens. So let's open our instance. Let's click on SSH. And once again, I'll use this particular command to check whether my startup script has executed. Let's copy this. Now to get more information about that particular command, you need to see my previous lecture. So I will give you a link of that previous lecture in the description below. You can just check that out. So let's paste this command and let's see what we see as an output. So here you will see that error reading object trying unauth uh, unauthenticated download. So it's not able to find that particular file because I have restricted access. So what I need to do now is I will just edit this particular virtual machine. Click on instance one again. And this time I'll click on edit. So you can see that I can only save this as long as I've, my machine is stopped. So that's what I need to do. Let's cancel this and let's stop this particular machine. So let's click on stop. Okay, so the instance has been stopped. Let's try to edit it now. Let's click on edit. And now you can see that I'm able to edit this particular scope access to the service account. So let's enable this now. Let's make it just read only and click on save. And now because I'm restarting the machine, the startup script should run again. So let's start and resume this particular machine once more. And this time the startup script should execute. So that is one important thing to remember that your virtual machine should have access to your storage account for this to work. So once this 
is saved. Let's start and resume this particular machine. And now let's try to refresh this page. And now you can see that this works. Okay, so now let's look at the fourth way in which you can use your startup script. Now that is using the gcloud command. See, the advantage of using the gcloud command is that you, know, you do not need to store your startup script in a cloud storage bucket. So you can store it locally. Now gcloud is especially useful if you're using uh, tools like Ansible or Terraform to create your instances because the script can be stored locally. So you do not have to do that extra step of loading your particular file into a cloud storage bucket. So let's see the command. So the command is straightforward. It's just a gcloud normal command. So the only extra parameter that you need to add is metadata from file. And this is basically startup script and it should point to the local file in your system. So let's copy this. And let's use this particular command. So I'll be using the cloud shell to create my instance. So let's log into my cloud shell. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a startup script. So I have already created one. And it's called startup.txt. So let, let me show you this particular file. So it just contains everything that is there in our startup script. So now let's run our particular gcloud command. So this is my gcloud command. So all that I need to do is I just need to add the name of my instance and the path of my startup script. So let's copy this and let's paste it. Yes. So you can see my instance has been created. So let's SSH into this machine and let's see whether the startup script has run. Again, let's use the command. I'll just copy this. And let's paste that particular command. And you can see that it has run. OK, so now those are some of the ways in which you can create your startup script. So I hope this was a useful lecture. Now, in this particular lecture, the startup script was at an instance level, so not at a project level. So in the next chapter, we'll talk about how you can create your startup script at a project level. So I'll see you in the next chapter.